How's it going everybody? My name is Avery and this is the third episode in our Raylib tutorial series. We're making a game using Raylib in the Go language. In today's episode, um, we're covering over a few things. We're going to be loading in some music and we're going to be setting up some of the stuff for the camera class. I know I had mentioned that we're going to be doing some of the animation stuff, but uh, I think I'll just do that for next episode. Just make sure that the episodes aren't super long. But uh, yeah, if you guys need that, um, if you're watching the video as it uploads today, just wait a day or two and I'll have the next one out. And if you guys are watching this sometime in the future, the animation stuff's already out. So if that's what you guys are looking for, go ahead and check that video. So this guy, he reached out to me. His name is Harry and he's working on a YouTube channel where he's making music for video games. So he made a game for, he made a, my bad, he made a song for the game that we're making. So I'll have this linked in the description. I'll have his channel linked in the description as well. Um, you should watch this video where he made a song for a different game. As well. And I assume maybe in the future he'll make a video talking about how he made this song. So I'll have that one as linked and I'll probably have a pop up somewhere here on the screen as well once that's out. So once you go to download and you can click more and just click download file. And it might make you log in to SoundCloud. But basically it'll just get the song file downloaded. And I have it um, I changed the name of the song, so this is what I have. It's Harry's background music. And as we can see, once we run everything from today's code, it's going to look something like this. Um, if you guys can't hear the music, I don't know if it's picking up through my mic or how the recordings works, but I'll have it overlaid. Yeah, I like the song a lot. Uh, thanks again, Harry, if you're watching this video. Um, it was really great, and I think it's going to be a great resource for making our game. So let's just copy. Um, I'm just going to move that uh, file that I have into resource. Okay. And now we can jump right into this episode's code. So let's just pull up G edit. Someone commented asking if I can use a different uh, IDE. I don't know if they commented that on my first video or the second video. I'll have to double check because um, the first video I didn't even use this. I just did it in the terminal. But uh, I mean, I think everything in Gedit looks pretty nice. But if you yeah, if you guys want to follow something, like if you want me to use VS Code, I can. But I'd rather just be using this. I mean, it <laughs> looks fine, and everything for Go is highlighted correctly, and there's line numbers and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be using this for now. But let me know in the comments. So let's set up the stuff for the song first. So in here in our variable, we'll actually create some of the things. We can do music pause, and that'll be a boolean. And then we can have our music. It's gonna be RL music, just like that. And then in our input, we'll, not for the actual game, but basically just for testing, we'll just keep track of um, controlling if it's paused or not. So you can just do if RL is key pressed, as I mentioned, key down is once it's being held down, key press means it's been down and then released. So since it's just going to be a switch for pausing and unpausing, you want to make sure it's released, so you do press. Um, but like I said, this isn't for the game, it's just for testing. So that's why it's just going to be Q. So it's going to be music pause equals music pause. And if you guys aren't too familiar with programming, just this exclamation just means the opposite. So if it's true, then it's going to be the opposite of true, so it's setting to false, and then vice versa. So that's just an easy way to flip a boolean. In our update function, we can go ahead and actually play the song. So it's going to be RL update music stream, the music. And then here we can check if it's paused or not. So if music paused, it's going to be RL. Um, pause music stream and the music else and then here just to continue it or resume music stream music and as always you should look at the cheat sheet for this stuff there's a whole section about audio um, and there's tons of examples and has all the functions and there's also um, 
on the Raylib Go uh, doc page, it has all that stuff as well. So that's just for pausing it. This main light is for our testing for right now. And then in our init, we're going to actually initialize the music. So we can do rl init audio device. And then we'll do music equals rl load music. And then in here will be where you have our file. And as I said, mine is called Harry's background music dot mp3 and then we'll just do music pause equals false and rl play music stream play music stream yeah and then music is going to be in there and then in our quit function we'll just make sure to close out all this stuff so rl unload music stream music and then rl close audio device and this should be everything that we need for that so let's go in here and let's quickly test it and make sure that it works okay undefined load music um, that's right here rl load music and that's going to be actually a load music stream. So just like that. And here we have it. Our game and songs playing in the background. So now the next part is going to be setting up our camera. Um, basically, as you can see, the player walks around. We want the player to be followed by a camera. So the player is going to be placed in the center of the camera, basically. And as he moves, the world's going to move around him. Or he's going to move around the world and the camera's going to follow him. So to do that, and back in our variable, we're going to set up, make our camera, um, should be cam, and it's going to be camera 2D. Um, when we're doing this stuff, make sure to do 2D for everything, because Raylib also has some 3D options. And I think by default, some of the stuff is 3D. So in our init, we can actually initialize this camera. And I guess there's a few ways to do this, because, I mean, there's a, a lot that's being passed into it. So you can have them as individual variables that are passed in, but we're just gonna pass them in just straight into the parameters. So the camera, it's gonna want the first get the size of the camera and where it's gonna be looking at. And then it's also gonna to want to have a rotation and the zoom. So we can do RL new vector. And that's going to be that one. And this one is going to be RL new vector. I want to make sure that these are vector twos. And then the rotation is going to be zero. And the zoom will be zero. And so if you wanted to zoom in on the player and the game itself, you can just change that. And if you wanted to rotate the screen, you can change that. And you can call that just by doing like camera dot zoom. And you, you know, you adjust it however you want and then rotation as well. So in here, we're going to do, let's make sure they're float 32s. So let's do that, and then that as well right here. And I guess I'll copy this real quick for this second one. So the first one is going to be the screen width divided by two, and this one's going to be the screen height divided by two, just like that. And then here it's going to be player desk dot x minus, and in here it's going to be player desk dot width divided by two, and let's copy that, and we'll just change it to the y and the height, y, and then height. So this is for initially setting what the camera's going to be looking at, but we're going to continuously update that. So we can, in here, we'll do camera target equals that, just like that. And that should work. And then our render function, um, we also need to make sure it renders um, correctly. So it's going to be RL begin, uh, begin mode 2D. We'll do the camera, and then down here, we'll do RL in mode 2D. 
So it just knows that I need to work with a camera rendering. And the target that we have is right here. And that should work just right off the bat. Make sure it's saved and we can go and run it. Okay, here we have it now, everything's centered. And as we move around, we can see that the world moves around as the player stays in the center of the screen. But it's really as simple as that. Hopefully today's video is a quick video. Um, we talked about loading in some music and playing in the background. Uh, I guess I haven't tested, but Q as of now should pause the song, and that works perfectly. And if you wanted to, you can test around in some of the input things to change the zoom and to change the rotation. The camera stuff is in here as well. Camera 2D. Um, I guess there's probably a zoom in here. Um, and a little bit more in-depth uh, functions on how to control these things. But yeah, stay tuned. In the next episode, we're definitely covering some animation stuff, and we're moving on from there. Um, hopefully the game is... Uh, I guess we're just getting started, but it's going to be picking up pretty quickly. And once again, make sure to download it on here, and um, to check out this guy's channel. Thanks again, Perry, for the song, and see you guys again next time. Bye.